Welcome to a tutorial video on Unity 2D Basics. In this video, I'm going to talk about camera follow and update methods. I want to also warn here at the top that this is actually part three of a series on Unity 2D Basics, and I recommend checking out the previous two videos. In the first video, I talked about player objects, the player object, especially as sprites, and then we talked about image data and working with sprites. In the second video, I talked more about tile maps and tile collisions, and we built in concept, built on the concepts of the first video, where we talked about di different collisions, working with a rigid body for a player game object, and working with collision, tile map collision for the tile map, and box collider for the collision of the player game sprite, or the sprite <laughs> game object named player. So in this video, I mentioned and we're going to talk about camera follow and update methods. Now both of these concepts sort of go together because to understand the one, we have to start to understand the other. So you may have noticed if I play this, based on the previous videos, we could move around with WASD or our arrow keys and move around in our little thing. But if we move to the side, we eventually just stopped wherever the camera was. We couldn't move beyond our walls. So if we want a much larger level, which is what the aim is, then we need to do something called camera follow. So what we need to do then is tell the camera that if the player game object is moving, that it should follow that. That is, the camera should be roughly in the same position as the player game object. So we're always looking at the player game object as it moves throughout the level. This also allows us to expand the level considerably because the camera will always be on the player game object as it moves through our level. So to do that, I'm going to come out of play mode and we need to add something to the camera. So I'm going to select main camera from the hierarchy view and we're going to look at it here for just a moment. Now notice it has its own transform and has its own settings under camera, but over here in the different options, hand tool, move, rotate, everything else, I can also apply those to the main camera. So I'm going to select move tool, make sure main camera is selected within hierarchy, and move it just a little bit. So notice that its position within its transform, in this case Y, is being updated. Either positive or negative, depending on which direction I want to move it. So let's move it so that the floor is just slightly outside of the camera. I'm going to select the Move tool. We're going to move this a little bit so we can keep it within this frame. So notice our camera preview. Our floor is slightly outside of the camera, which is what we want. And now, if we play, we have the basics of a sort of a 2D platformer. Well, we're not doing a whole lot, but we can move around and we've got our walls and our floor. So, we still want the camera to follow the player game object. And now we've got it positioned more or less where we want it. With our own position of X, Y is 2.16 and Z is negative 10. So, if we want the main camera to follow the position of the player game object, we're going to have to write some code to do that. So, <laughs> Similar to how we added a behavioral script to the player game object, we're now going to add one to the main camera. So with main camera selected within a hierarchy view, we're coming over to the inspector view, we're going to add component, scroll down to the bottom, new script, and change this, create and add new behavioral script. Give Unity just a moment to catch up. And I'm going to rename this Camera Script. And as I've talked about throughout this series, we want to make sure these project files are correctly organized. So I'm going to click and drag Camera Script into our Scripts folder so that all of our scripts file are in our scripts folder, tiles are in tiles, palettes are in palettes, and everything's organized the way we want. So I'm going to double click camera script to open it up in Visual Studio. And the first thing I'm going to do, since I didn't rename it when I created it, is go ahead and make sure that 
the file name matches its contents. So camera script is the object within this and it matches the name of the file, camera script. So okay, we want to keep track of the player game object within this script that is part of the main camera game object. So to do that, let's follow a similar model to what we did with player in the first video. We're going to create a public variable that's going to contain a reference to the player game object and then we're going to use that data in the script to do something with it. So the first thing we need to do is create a public variable game object and we can call this target. So we have a public game object called target. So I'm going to go ahead and save this control S and I'm going to move back over to Unity and now I'm going to select player game object or the main player game object and notice it has a target and because this is a public variable we can now change it. So now I'm going to drag the player game object from the hierarchy view over into the expector view of the main camera and associate with the target. So the target will be the player game object. So now that that's set up, I'm going to move back to the code and we're going to work with this. So we have our target and now we want to do something with it. Okay, well I'm going to come down and update for right now and say this transform position, so the position of the transform, which in Unity is right here, position of transform, so these positions right here, is equal to a new vector 3 of the target transform position x and this transform position y and this transform position z. So what did I just do? I said every time this update is called update the position of this game object. So it's transform position and notice it's a vector 3, so a new vector 3 of the target's transform position x. So wherever the target x is and then keep the y and z. So we updated the camera using the move tool within Unity. We selected the main camera game object and moved it up and down until we get it pretty much the way we want it. We don't want to change that. We want to keep those values so whatever those transform values are for position y and position z, keep them. However, whenever the game, the player game object moves, which in this case is associated with target within the script file, we want to go ahead and update its x. So I'm going to save this, control s, move back over to unity, and let's play to see what this looks like. Give unity a second to catch up on everything. So now, if we move, notice in the scene view, the camera is moving with us and it's only moving along the x-axis. In fact, we see that over here in transform position x. Its y and its z is staying exactly the same, which is what we expect to happen. Because we don't want to move the y and the z, we want to just move the x. So coming out of play mode, now we have our camera follow set up pretty well. However, I've made a tiny mistake I want to clear up here. So coming back over to Visual Studio, I put this in update. But, if you look at the documentation for Unity, it tells you to use a different update function. And this leads us into the discussion of the second part of this video, the different update functions. There are in fact three of them we can use. The first of which is the normal one, update. This is called once per frame. So if we're running at 60 frames a second, this will get called 60 times within a second. So once per frame. The other two are fixed update, which has to do with physics cycles and physics events. And the last one is light, late update. Late update is always called late. It is called right before anything is drawn. So what does all this mean? So if we care about things being updated once per frame, we want to use update. If we're doing anything with physics, we need to use the fixed update. And if we want to update anything right before it's drawn, we want to use late update. So if you look at the documentation or any other examples that do camera follow, they mention you probably want to use late update. 
The reason for this is especially if we're looking at another game object, is we want the other game object to do whatever update it's doing. And then within this, the camera, we want to do late update last. So the very last thing that happens. So instead of update, I'm going to call this late update. And then I'm going to save the file. So now the very last thing that happens right before stuff is being drawn is the late update on this. And notice it automatically knew what I was talking about. I updated the late update and it knew what I meant. So let's come over to Unity and let's play. And as soon as everything catches back up, we see it didn't really change anything. It's now working on late update and it's being drawn or it's being called right before everything is being drawn. And that's more or less what we want. Well, I'm going to come out of play mode and now we're going to change the player script because there's something else going on there. So as I mentioned, three different update methods, update, normal call per, per frame, fixed update, which deals with anything to do with physics and late update, which is called right before stuff is being drawn. It's the last update to be called. Well, let's come over to visual studio. So I've got late update for camera script over in player script. Oh, we're using update, but we're doing physics stuff. We're getting the axes and we're adding forces. This should not be an update. This should be an fixed update. So I'm going to update that now and call this fixed update. The reason for this is that fixed update can potentially be called multiple times before update is called because it works as part of the physics system and the physics system is slightly different than the rendering system. So update is called per frame. It's basically a redraw idea. You want to update something and it'll be redrawn, update and then redrawn, update and then redrawn as continuously across this game. Fixed update though happens on a physics system. So there could be a physics event, there's some, some type of collision going on. That's going to be called based on the physics input then potentially update could be called and then late update could be called. So we want to handle everything that's going on with physics within fixed update. And it helps that there's names are very, very similar. So physics and fixed to keep those ideas together. Do everything in physics within fixed update. Update will be called once per frame and late update will be called as the last step of that to update everything and then draw it. So I've already saved this with control S. Let's move back over to unity and we'll play. Now that's caught up to everything, we see our fixed update movements. Everything is more or less the way we want. And our camera is moving along our x-axis, which is what we expect to happen. So now that we've got a camera, let's make this level a little bit bigger as the last part of this video. I'm going to come out of play mode and I'm going to make sure I can see my different tile maps here. So I want to draw new tiles. I'm going to use that using a tile palette. We access the tile palette through window, 2D, tile palette. Then we want to make sure we select whatever the active tile map is. In this case, it's walls. So on this time, I'm going to use erase with active brush and I'm going to erase the tiles on the right hand side. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and we're going to erase them. This time I want to draw the walls in a different place. I want to draw the walls using an active brush way over here. So I'm going to make sure this is selected, make sure I've got walls, and I'm going to draw these Oops, so if I ever make a mistake, erase with active brush and select and come down, zoom out a little bit, and that's what I want right there. Okay, so I've updated my walls. Now I'm going to update the floor. Just as a reminder, window, 2D, tile palette, active tile map, floor. I closed the window on accident just as a reminder, this time I'm going to select active brush, select the tile I want, 
and draw the rest of the tiles out. And then close this. So we've just made our level bigger. The default camera view is this initial view, and then as we move, the camera will follow. And we see we can keep moving. And so now we've got this wall over here on the far side, and we moved right up to it. And we can move all the way over here. So now we've expended, expanded this level, that is, using our camera follow. We've also talked about when the update methods are used in different things. So let's review these two ideas. I updated the camera follow, created it by adding a script to the main camera. The script within the main camera had a public variable game object called target. Within late update, so right before everything is going to be drawn, I adjusted its transform position, the current position of the main camera, to be equal to a new vector 3 of the target's position x and then its existing y and z. So we're just following the x-axis as we move horizontally. And we talked about how late update is different from update and different than fixed update. Coming over to player script, we updated this by calling this fixed update because now we're doing physics. And again, I talked about how those names are similar so they're easier to remember. If we're doing physics, we want fixed, pH and F. So for fixed update, we're doing physics actions. For late update, we want to update everything right before it's being drawn, the very fat last thing that's being done within that script file. So we came back over to Unity and we saw that we can now expand using the tile maps to draw them on an expanded space of our grid and now the camera will follow the player so we can start to explore the level horizontally by moving across either left or right. Using the expanded tile maps to draw now expanded tiles and allowing the camera follow to help us move across the level. So two different concepts here, camera follow and update methods. Update methods again are update, fixed update, and late update. Update is called once per frame. Fixed update should be used with physics. Again, names are similar, helpful to remember that. And late update called right before things were going to be rendered. And we added a new script to main camera to help us follow the player by using its position and changing the target, changing the transform position of the current game object, main camera, to be equal to a new vector 3 of the x position of the player game object and then the current y and z position. So we're tracking it horizontally. Thanks for watching.